Why do we use multimedia in the classroom, and specifically in the 21st century classroom? The key to incorporating technology into the classroom is that the emphasis should not be on the technology itself, but it should be learning. In fact, the ultimate goal should always be learning. Let's look at multimedia use in the classroom. Students in fifth grade have to write an opinion essay, among other pieces of writing, and let's say Milton's teacher only gives him the ability to write it the way it's always been done, using paper and pencil. Look at Milton. Poor Milton. He doesn't look very happy. All he has is the ability to write with paper and pencil. Let's look at a different example. Here's Charlie. Charlie's teacher has set up an online wiki and allowed him to go online and get feedback from his peers for the opinion assignment. Look at how happy Charlie looks. Yay! Now could Charlie still do the assignment on paper or pencil? Sure. But now his teacher has given him a choice. When assessing online multimedia or multimedia of any kind in the classroom, I really like the use of rubrics such as you see here. Giving the students a framework as to what they need to do is very beneficial. Not only for me as a teacher, but also for the students because they know what it is they have to accomplish and then that gives them the flexibility to go about creating it the way they would like to. I really enjoyed seeing the rubrics on the University of Wisconsin Stouts website and I really appreciate the fact that they had Web 2.0, they had classroom management, they had uh, group work participation, they had all kinds of rubrics on their website that are really going to be beneficial for the students. Moving on to our next topic, 21st century learning. What is 21st century learning? Well, as you can see here from this lovely graphic designed by the Office of Instructional Technology from Baltimore County Public Schools, you can see that there are six key facets to the 21st century learning uh, platform. There's critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, innovation, creativity, and communication. Richard Allington makes a very good point regarding 21st century learning skills, saying that illiterates rarely use 21st century literacy because they never developed 18th century kind of literacy. Which to me says that old school skills such as reading out of a book and getting pleasure and knowledge from it is just as important, if not more important, than being able to use current 21st century skills. So you can't throw out all the old school learning and skills just because of the latest and greatest has come along. You can't go to the 21st century if you completely ignored everything learned in other generations. 21st century learning skills are really about knowing how to learn. Karen Cater said it best when she said, success in the 21st century requires knowing how to learn. Metacognition is sorely lacking in our students, in my opinion. Students need to complete a test, and they feel they have to just because they've been told they have to. They don't really stop to think why this happened or why they might have the right answer. Unfortunately, a lot of students think, okay, I have an answer, let's move on. They may give you this kind of a look. What else do you want me to do? Why do I have to do that? I gave you an answer, let's move on. I generally love to have students working in groups. I feel that multiple heads are better than one. The, the difficulty lies in having the time to allow for creativity and flexibility. I really want to incorporate more 21st century learning skills when my students do their research report on the American Revolutionary War figure. In the past, they've had to do research, fill an outline, draft, and then publish a multi-paragraph report, pretty much just using paper and pencil and the resources that I provide for them. In the future, I really want to set it up so the students can use um, a lot of different resources and a lot of different multimedia as part of their research. I want to collaborate with the library media specialist and also the tech integration teacher so that the students have the ability to use brain pop videos. Bobby, have you seen my three-cornered hat? Hey, give me that. Online databases from BCPS is Library Information Services Office, including databases such as America the Beautiful, Net Trekker, and the Online Encyclopedia World. A list of pre-vetted websites that, the, that has already been uh, approved by different and various curriculum offices for students to f find notes, as well as old-fashioned, you guessed it, books, multimedia such as encyclopedias, any videos, and any audio recordings that we may have as well.
The point is to give the students a Finally, we move on to universal design for learning. There are three main principles when it comes to the UDL. The first is multiple means of representation, that's the what of learning. Multiple means of action and expression, the how of learning. And multiple means of engagement, the why of learning. Why should we incorporate UDL into a 21st century classroom? Because UDL allows for students to take in new information in a format which best suits their learning style. Charlie here appreciates videos. I need one of those 8x2 pieces. No, no, 8x2. Eight, eight this is how Charlie learns best. Milton, on the other hand, is much more of an auditory guy. He much more appreciates being able to listen to a book on CD or on tape rather than just having to read it himself or watch a video. Finally, little Bob here is just very active. And he best learns from more kinesthetic and tactile modes of learning. The best part about UDL is, is it lets children pick which method of information seeking is best for them. Is it video, auditory, or moving around? what's best for them. UDL not only allows children to access information in a way which is best suited for their needs, it also allows them to take ownership in their work because they produce it in the way that best shows their strengths and their creativity. Charlie here prefers to create things on the computer. Milton prefers to do it regular old paper and pencil way. But maybe Bob would like to act it out in a skit. According to UDL, Whichever would best suit their needs, as long as they fulfill the requirements, is acceptable. Finally, for my classroom example for UDL, the research report that I had talked about before is what I consider to be a very good example of incorporating UDL principles into learning. The students have the flexibility to access information in the format that best suits them, using text, video, listening, etc. They can present their final product in the way that best suits their strengths. They may write a research report. They may produce and record an interview using a flip cam or any other method. And they may make a digital presentation. They may make a podcast. They may make a um, photo, uh, photo story. Uh, they have a wide range. Giving choice is what motivates and allows students to take ownership of their work.